Thank you, everybody, for getting here by 9 o'clock. We have a few empty seats here, so we have a few stragglers, but we do want to start on time. So thank you all for coming and supporting the Silver Bend Temple. And Carrie is our instructor today, and I'm going to let her share with you her background and what she's going to be doing. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. This means a really big deal to me. This church here, I'll try not to cry, but um, my grandmother was a member of this church. And being here today, it just breaks my heart. I will be teaching you um, how I learned how to make lay. First off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Carrie, and I live in Kapa'a here on the island of Kauai. Um, I've been here for many, many years. Um, I've been very fortunate to have been able to learn from different people. Um, my greatest influence that I've learned from was my kumu here. Um, her name is Hualani Kuule. She is from the big island of Hawaii. And then we also have my kumu, my bear, who resides here on the island of Kauai. So um, I thank you all for allowing me to share what I know I will try my best to try and incorporate modern times because how we learned way back when, um, we had to actually start from the very beginning. You have to go into the mountains or you had to go to the ocean to gather. Um, this right here, it looks a little old, which it is. It's something that I made when I was 10 years old. but. This is how we would start. So this is how many of you have seen the hao bush that grows along the rivers. Um, it also grows inland as well. So uh, my kumu would have us go and gather. So it was a family event. It was a big event. So everyone had to partake. Um, you'd have to cut the trees. Um, you have to strip the bark. The bark would have to sit, so you would have to set it in water so that it can separate from the bark. So you would get, this is what you would end up with. It's similar to what we use now, which is the raffia. Um, I'll take a piece out so you guys can actually feel uh, the difference between the raffia and how. And as you can see, this has lasted um, a very long time. So you can compare the raffia to the how, and you have to keep in mind this was a 10-year-old that made this, so <laughs> my braids were um, not as good as it is today. Okay, how many of you have made um, haku or bili style? Yet? You have made bili before. Okay, and um, that was uh, bili style or haku? Uh, bili. Okay, so you are familiar on what we're going to be doing today. Um, in front of you, um, each of you should have, so this little bundle here is the base. So if you want to open it up, how I learned was from the bark, yeah. So this is a different style. So we're going to be braiding. You can incorporate, um, if you don't have, you can use um, like a t-shirt. You can use any type of material that would be strong enough to stay straight. Each of you will have a length like this. So what you're going to do, let me pass it up first. Okay. okay, so what we're gonna do is this piece here, you are going to find the two ends. Okay. We are gonna be using this piece here to make your ends of your haku, okay? How many of you know how to braid? We all know how to braid. You're gonna grab three pieces of your long, of your tea leaf. All right, so once you get this, we're gonna make sure we set this aside. And now you're going to cut this piece. So you're gonna just cut to make four pieces. Okay, so you're gonna take Two each, so one is going to be on the front. Okay, so you're going to have just two pieces. This is actually going to be the two ends of your lay. Yeah, so now at the base, 
Um, so you have your two pieces. Okay, so the two, you're gonna find the middle, and now you're gonna grab your three pieces of the tea leaf, and you're going to just find the center. Okay, and now we are going to wrap, so just once, and you're gonna pull tight, okay? So once you wrap it once, your pieces should be about equal on both sides. And if it's not, it's fine, you can cut it. Okay, so now you're gonna tie it in a knot. Okay, this should be long enough so that we can tie it at the end, yeah. So we're not gonna weave it now, but at the end you would just go ahead and twist and twist and twist until you have something to tie with, okay? So, everyone has a knot? Yep. Just once, just once, and pull, pull tight. Yeah, so pull them tight, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yep, perfect. Just pull it a little bit tighter. There you go. Yeah, so this raffia, if you have really thin pieces, when you're wrapping, you cannot pull really tight because it's going to break and that's your whole entire leg gone. Okay, the old way, we would be on the floor. You'd be sitting down on the floor and your feet would be your extra hand. You'd use your toes to hold this and then you braid. So that would be the old, old way. Um, you can do that when you're comfortable, when you're home, but I don't think anybody would appreciate my feet on their lace, so. I'll be passing around duct tape, so we're gonna tape it to that table. This, so just make sure that you're able to braid. Yes, you are going to I mean, braid it tight, as tight as you can. If you have it loose, when you're pulling, it's gonna stretch. All right, when we get to the end of your braid, that other three strips is the add-ons, okay? And we wanna make sure we add it on and you're gonna bind it tightly so that it doesn't come out when you pull that next leaf. So the leaves that you have in front of you, this is what they look like, okay, before we cut them. And I'm also gonna have, um, we have red, and then we also have the mixed color. You'll have like a tinge or a hint of green, and then these have the hints of reds inside the leaf. Okay, yeah. so this is your braid. Do you see how you have yeah. so this? Yeah. I'm gonna add here, just like this. And you're just gonna braid over. And then this one, same thing. So it's gonna be a really long string. Yeah, so we're gonna cut it to fit your head after. You like try to add this one? Okay. So you see where your thumb is? Yeah. That center one? Lift up your thumb. And you're gonna add the leaf on top here, right there. Okay. On that center one. Yeah, there you go. And then you're gonna weave that over, okay? And now you're gonna add this one on top of that one. On top. Yep. So you always add on in the center. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And now your third one. So you do it all in a row? Yep. Oh, okay. I mean, it all depends because yours is all at the same length. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay over here? Is that too loose? Nope. That's good. Good job. Good job. Do it as tight as you can. There you go. There you go. And we'll pull. Yep. Good job. Thank you, Maddie. I'm going to measure, okay? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, so when 
you tie the end. Um, don't tie it too tight because we may have to adjust it only if your lay got pulled longer and we may have to take off flowers so that it fits perfectly, yeah? Thank you. Okay, so you have two leaves in front of you. So what we're going to do is you're going to take one and you're going to fold it in half. Okay? And now with your scissors. So carefully find the center of your leaf. Find the center of your leaf carefully. You're going to just place the scissors right in the center and you're just going to gently hold and cut all the way to the top. Okay, so now you're going to have two pieces from that one. All right, so now go ahead and cut the other side. Yeah. So you'll have four. And then same with the red. Same with your red leaf. If you want a thick, thicker looking leaf, then you would keep it like this. But if you want it thinner, you would cut same right in the center all the way to the top. Okay, so if you don't have colors or flowers that you're able to use while you're making lay, you can use this type of leaf or ribbon and you can fold it to mimic a petal. So you can actually make flowers from the actual leaf if you didn't have flowers to work with. Okay, and then you can also make um, roses. If you've had any, has anyone made roses with ribbon before? Oh, it's, it's just a matter of practice and time. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now to mimic a leaf for your lei, you're gonna take your leaf and you gauge how big you want the leaf to look, okay? So you're gonna cut it at an angle so it's going to be, your scissors is going to be at an angle. So it's going to look like a diamond, okay? So it's easier to hold, um, hold your leaf here. Or you gauge how big you want your leaf to look, okay? And you're just going to take your scissors and cut it at an angle, okay? And should I cut the top? Um, or just about just here? Okay, so what's going to happen now is you're going to cut it at an angle. Sorry, I'm touching your leaf. Right. Okay, so now when you do your lay, this piece is going to mimic, um, so you're going to have it look like this. Yeah, so it's, you're going to fold it in so half. Make it bigger, longer. It's up to you. Yeah, so when you see men, when the men wear their head lay, it's big. You'll see like the big tea leaf or the big kukui. So their leaves are actually cut till about here. You know, you have like, when you watch, um, when they do like the surf contest and you see those big, huge hakuleis on them, they have the bigger leaves. So it all depends how big you want your, your lay to look. Um, and you just cut it at an angle. So it looks like a diamond. So this is the same style. You see the tea leaf lay, the Miley style tea leaf lay. This is exactly how you're gonna cut your leaves. So it'll mimic a Miley, a Miley lay. All right, so you're gonna take, we had the clipped raffia that was, um, okay, so these pieces here, when you get to, say, you wanna tie when your piece is this short. If you go to this length, you won't be able to tie add-on, yeah? So if you're already with your flowers placed on your lay and you have your winding piece, be sure to make, you have to make sure you leave this much space so you can tie the end, yeah. Because if you're here, you won't be able to tie it and then you'd have to take off flowers, 
Okay, so how we start is you're going to take your one piece and your end here. So I like to leave this much space so that I have enough to tie at the end. So you're going to place it on the back right at the edge where that knot is. And you're gonna wrap around once. Okay, so your long piece is on your right. Okay, left-handed may have to adjust. Yeah, so you make it where it's comfortable for you. So now that you have your short piece on your left, you're gonna tie it in a knot. <clears throat> So single knot, right over left, and then left over right. Okay, and at the end you're going to have this piece hanging over. You want to make sure you cut it to about here so it's not sticking out when you start leaving. Okay. Alright, so with your leaves, you start with two. You're going to crisscross your leaf. Crisscross. So crisscross your leaf. You can, and I'll show you with the orchid. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to place that on there because the stems are very delicate. Um, so crisscross, by all means, I'm just showing you so you guys can make your own pattern. You can design your lay how you want to design your lay, but just to place this onto the start of your lay. So now, Use your thumb as the stop or the holder. And then you also have a clothespin. If you have to stop to gather or put things together, you can just clip it on and then continue, okay? So your pointer will be on the base, the back of your leg, and your thumb is on the front, okay? So you're gonna use this to place your leaves and your flower, okay? So now, you go over left over right. Okay, so you're gonna go left tw once, twice, and now you can hold it with your left hand or opposite when switch. Okay, so if everyone's leaves are placed on your orchid stem, you're going to place onto your leg, but because this stem is so fragile, um, you are going to gently wrap. And with the leaf, you're going to use it as a protector. So, you know how I asked you to pull it tight? So with the orchid, you're not going to pull it tight yet. So now your leaf, you're going to put on the base right below the flower so that it protects the stem. Okay, so now you're gonna wrap it twice so that it protects the flower and the stem. Because if we pull really tight, that whole flower will just fall off. And then the leaf you just tuck underneath. Okay. So, no, you're gonna go um, So right here, you place your... <laughs> So this, your thumb and your pointer is like your best friend, okay? So now you're gonna just wrap, so once. I know what I wanna do. Are you, op it, whatever's easy, if you wanna switch hands, if that's easier for you. Supposed to go tight. Yes, tight. Okay, and then twice. There you go, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now all you do is you're putting your thumb behind this on the bottom and you're holding your braid, okay? Everybody's holding their braid and you're just gonna push your thumb up and that mimics the leaf, see? Yep. So if you want, you, you know this is how many flowers you have, okay, and how many leaves you have. You might have to spread it out. So like 
Typically, this is probably about six, and then the flour. Okay, so the only thing is, let me see. Yeah, so you're just gonna push up. Yeah. Yeah, do and you like, have one that's done that we can like see what the yeah. back is supposed to be? So, see this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it doesn't, um, it doesn't show. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so that's pretty. So pretty. Yeah, maybe like an inch and a half. Okay. So I'm just gonna take in my guest back to the air. Actually, you can push this up. Oh, nope, perfect. So right there, you, your thumb, your just thumb goes long. like this. Um, so your thumb is here. Mm -hmm. Now that leaf, you're gonna put your thumb under the leaf. So you see how your leaf is like this. Mm -hmm. So your thumb goes under. And you just push that up. There you go. Just with the flower, push right now. Push that up. I think you gotta go tighter. You have to pull tight. So the trick is you always look at the back of your leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to make yeah, so if there's big spaces, so now your thumb, yep, push that up. Push it up. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna place um the flower base. Yep. You're gonna put it on the center. You can you can place it onto the side, but you just have to make sure that you want to protect that stem, yeah, because it okay. this is gonna fall off. So you want to make sure it goes. Um, there you go. Yep. Wrap. Gentle wrap. wrap. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can go twice actually. Yeah. So you go like this when you grab your leaf. You're gonna, gonna yeah. You're gonna pinch it, and then yeah. put it on, and then same with the other leaf. Pinch it, and then now you're gonna go ahead and wrap it. Twice. Yep. And then Sorry, push it up leaf. And do it again. Correct. And then you push up. Okay. Look at your back, though. Check, check your back. Yep. So you have the tuberose. You want to make sure your pattern, yeah. If you're designing, if you want a certain pattern, yeah, yeah. Okay. So sometimes you do. You, you might want to, yeah. So you can fill. So this might actually be one, two, three, four. So you would fill like. Okay. And then you would fill them by the leaves. Okay. Yeah, and then your colors. Okay. Well, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Like, uh, Billy style is lay that we would put together with uh, different types of materials. Um, we have different types of flowers and foliage that we use, and you bind it to a base of the lay. This is the last one. Yes. And one of the most important things that I didn't um, say earlier is that when you gather, um, you always have to ask for permission before you take and you ask with intention. What is the purpose that you're picking the low mm -hmm. the plant that you're choosing? Mm -hmm. So anytime you make a lay for someone, you also want to give good intentions. If you're not feeling good, if you're having a bad moment or a bad day, then you shouldn't be making the lay because that energy will also be placed in the Sorry. gift that you're making for that person. Just make sure you hold this and you're gonna pull. Mm -hmm. But don't pull too tight because it might break. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So you just did a basic Same on the other side. Okay. And then this we're gonna trim. So you wanna just mimic. Okay. Yep. Just the hair things. Yep. Okay. And then the other end should look like this. And that's what yep. you put together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. So. My grandmother Yuriko Takikuma and my grandfather um, Yoshio Takikuma was uh, residents or they resided in the Wahewa camp. And uh, they also lived in Lumela, which is McBride camp. Um, I spent a lot of my weekends, so this was like my second home, a lot of my weekends in um, this area. So this became one of our, our stomping grounds. Uh, Just for the start, or every time you add it? Every time you add it. Every time you add it. So, two. Cool. And push up. With this working. Um, tuberos, I you don't really need to be as gentle because the stem is pretty sturdy. But any other um, flower that has a stem that's gonna like easily break, you wanna always protect that stem. There. Okay. First time you're gonna learn the technique. And so. yes. There you go. Perfect. Just like that. Yep. Yep. And then now you can add on a leaf. Okay. That's your last. Are we doing it? Go ahead. So this is your end. This is your last one. Okay. So what you do now is you hold this, take this around, and then pull this through. How old are you? Seven. Seven. And you did this? You made this lay? Wow. <laughs> Some of it. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. And this is going to be on your... On your head? On your head. Okay. Hold, hold this one. And I'm going to pull it, okay? So you hold. Hold, hold it tight, then. Yep. There you go. You just cut off the uh, rest of the braided area? Yeah, so what you're going to do now, see, you saw how, you notice how this leaf, the braid stretched, yeah? Uh -huh. So even though you measure, see, for example, you're making your lay, and you measure this braid, mm -hmm. when you're making your lay, it's actually going to stretch. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I tend to just tie a light knot at the end. Mm -hmm. So you can always, um, you're always gonna mimic the leaf. Try to cut it at an angle. This is one end, and then the same thing on the other end. So I need What's the difference between Vili style and Haku? Okay, so this is Vili. Uh -huh. Haku is to braid. So we're gonna we braid it in so you see how the flower. Put your best one back in. Oh, so you put the flower in and then mm -hmm. braid around it? Yeah. So you just put it in. Protect your stem. That's oh, what is that? This is the hop. She's not asking her what's the difference between. So you you won't see the stem. Oh. So you braid it in. Oh, oh so there's no raffia. Ra no. Oh. Yeah. So it's easier. Um, you braid it in, but you have to make sure you protect your stems. Yeah, because oh. not your flowers will just fall off. Oh, so haku isn't like about where it's placed, it's the style. Yeah, so basically, we, I grew up calling it hakule, yeah. but it was the haku is to braid. So technically what it meant was to bind, to keep, keep close, keep together, but vili is the actual style on wrapping. Oh. And then now it's more common that they call it le po. It wasn't called that when, I mean, I, I I wasn't taught that term um, way back when. Looks like a rope. Yeah, it looks like a rope. Look at that. Aww. So precious. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Good job. So this is my first workshop for this year. So again, mahalo everybody for being here. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys did an incredible job. Um, Oh! <laughs>